Welcome to the season finale of Fight Watch. We brought out our biggest dog possible, the world heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven to break down his fight against Badr Hari. Some people thought you were maybe scared to fight him. Were you scared? Hell no. All right, let's relive the moment. We go back to Oberhausen, Germany, December of 2017, and the drama unfolded the day before when it was time for the weigh-in. Mm -hmm. You were there, you weighed in. Yeah. Bader was a no-show for about an hour. What, what, yeah. what do you remember about that? Uh, I remember talking to my team and to the glory personnel, and they said, like, uh, hey, you finished, so whatever you want to do, if you want to go, you can go. I said, okay, cool, but uh, I'm going to wait here. I'm going to wait here till he shows up. And I'm gonna look this man right in his eyes, because he's gonna see what the problem is gonna be tomorrow. Now he's had a history of going off on these type of stare downs, throwing punches, pushing people. Were you afraid of something that might, something like that might happen? No, I was ready for anything. So I wasn't really busy with thinking of oh this might happen or this might happen. I was just relaxed. I was sharp. I was excited. So. I was ready for this. But did you feel like he was almost disrespecting you by showing up late like this? Mm. Was it an insult? No, I don't think it's an insult. It's just the way he, he, he runs his, his business. And there did you he, are. You're still there. I like that. Yeah, I'm still there. I, did, I talked to, to the media, and then afterwards I just, yeah, waited. Obviously, heavyweights don't have to cut weight, but is there a relief once you finally step on the scale, or does it matter to you at all? Mm, no. I have like a mental, uh, mentally a weight where I like to be on to, to make sure I perform the best, but it, yeah, it doesn't like come close to a kilo or something. So and he was so much bigger for this fight than he was in his last fight we saw against Hesty Gurgis. Yeah. Of course, he had, to, he had to gain some weight. Or else it's going to be, the difference is going to be even bigger. <laughs> Here's your old haircut. I like that yeah. haircut. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes the stare down, and man, it yeah. was intense. Yeah, it was intense, but you see, for me, I'm just relaxed. And you see, you see him breathing heavy. Like a bull. Yeah, but I, I don't know from, yeah, if it's from anger or from aggression or whatever. But I'm just, I'm just focused, focused and ready for this fight. This is what I've been training for, and people's been talking into this fight, about this fight. Like, hey, you need to fight him, and because he, uh, he was the best for years and whatever. So, I said, let's go. I've been beating everybody, so this guy wants it as well. Let's go. This is where I thought he was going to lose it. Look at his nostrils. Look at his, his eyes are watering up. Yeah. And you're calm. Yeah, I'm just same, same old Rico. Yeah. Just, I just, you know, for me, um, yeah, I'm not saying that he's acting, but this is just me. You know, the Rico you see, that's the Rico you get. And I don't try to be anybody else. This is just me, and I'm just relaxed. I'm focused, and I'm ready to do what I need to be doing. And then you talk a little trash here. Our guy Damien got you riled up. Yeah. To nobody. In my motherfucking house. In my motherfucking house. Yeah. That's so what then, it is. And that would kind of be a precursor of the stare down we'd see inside of the ring after all hell breaks loose. We'll get there in just a moment. But talk yeah. about this crowd. You, you, you've mentioned before you want to build this, the sport. You sold out this arena in Oberhausen. That had yeah. to be a great feeling. Yeah, that was amazing. And. Especially, it, it, was in, it, it wasn't in Holland, so uh, it was close, but still, it wasn't in Holland. And then uh, it was a nice arena, and then, yeah, when you, you sell out that arena as quick as it did, it was, yeah, it was amazing. The crowd was, was going crazy, was going totally off, and everybody's been waiting for this fight. Um, yeah, I was waiting for this fight, probably. Butter was waiting for this fight, so this was, uh, yeah, everything come, coming together. Tim Hughes, known the world over. What's he like yeah. as a, when you hear him yelling your name? He's got that great booming voice. So Tim, he, he hypes up the crowd, but he also hypes up, for me, he hypes up the fighters as well. So um, yeah, he has an amazing voice and it just, yeah, just hits you. You just, yeah, ready, now, there was, up. There was a lot of politics at play, obviously, when you're fighting someone like Badr Hari. What was the discussion of who comes out first and who gets what corner and whose name's on the poster first? What was that kind of dialogue like? Um, 
Well, yeah, he really uh, wanted to come up second, so I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> so, um, well, you're out first. I'm out first, so I'm I'm ready. Said it doesn't matter when I come out. It's just when I come out, I'm fired up. I'm ready for this fight, and uh, that's what I was. Now, where did your sprinting entrance come from? You've been doing this for a while. What what gave you the the hey, this is what I'm gonna do? Um, it's just the, that hype from the music I get, I, this, yeah, it's the music is just, it just jumps in like, bam, the beat drops, and then when the beat drops, you, I just cannot <laughs> walk, like, slowly to the ring, I just right. need to, it's just like a fire coming out, and, yeah, when a fire comes out, I just. Well, it, it looks cool when you run, like, you know, 30 yards, but when we're in New Jersey and you run 10 feet, it probably doesn't look as cool. No, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but it is what it is. You're right. I only fight on shows where the catwalk is like. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's in your contract. Yeah, now, that's right? in your contract. Well, no, did you fun. before this fight? Did did it feel different than a normal title fight? Did it did it have when you're walking down there? Did did you were you able to treat it like any other fight? Um, it wasn't any other fight, but in your mind you try to get it there because. Uh, yeah, there were there were so many things hanging on to this fight, like media and interviews and articles and everything. There was, uh, yeah, we're talking about this fight. So, but for me, I just tried to to focus and think like, hey, this is it's just a fight. Mm -hmm. And now you see butter coming out, and for me, I already feel like he he's not focused. He's looking around and. You understand what I'm saying? Right, yeah, usually he's got the, like, the way he was staring at you with the stare down. He's yeah. got those bull eyes locked yeah. in. Yeah, and now he's just looking to the ground and... Well, he wanted to walk through the crowd. Yeah, that's his thing yeah. for some kind of reason. There's the stare a little bit, but, yeah. A lot of his game is based on intimidation. Yeah, but I don't get intimidated because for me, he's just a man, two arms, two legs. For a lot of people, he's Butter Hari. But for me, he's just a man with two arms and two legs. My arms and my legs are bigger than his, so. <laughs> how, how big are your thighs? Have we measured those? No, never. What are, when you go get tailored for a suit, do they break out extra sheets of wool <laughs> to wrap around those thighs? <laughs> no, it is, it is tough, but they have like this, uh, this crazy big, big size, and then they just, yeah, Tighten make it sure tighten it up and make sure it, uh, it works. You see, I have just a small, small team behind me of like four or five people. Right. So and he's got the. He's got and, the whole. Uh, the whole crowd. They're about to come visit everybody, aren't they? Yeah. So he's got the whole entourage, but. Yeah. In the end, you can have as many people in your corner or around you, surrounding you, as possible, but. Well, here they come. What yeah. were you? What, what were you thinking right now when half the audience was trying to get into the ring? I was just staying focused. So when the bell rings, it's just me and him, and that's it. So, and it's interesting, he had a four inch reach advantage, which I didn't think about. So here we go, all his Moroccan fans. Tell me what you think about Moroccan fans for kickboxing. They're, they're amazing, they're crazy. Uh, but crazy in, in the positive sense of the word, you know? They're so, uh, they just go all out. And that that's the fans you need, that's the fans we want, because Everything that happens in the ring, they react on. So a punch, a kick, is like they they go all out. They go crazy. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's fun. Well, thankfully we were able to get everybody out of there, and the yeah, ring didn't collapse. Yeah, of course, of course, it's yeah, it's it's too bad that this happened because right. the, I, I love the way how excited they are, but these things uh, shouldn't shouldn't happen. Yes. But luckily, it turned out to be a, almost a light-hearted moment, which could have been a disaster. Yeah. And I love the fact that you guys, especially you, were just staring Badr Hari down, locked in. You didn't care what was going on outside. No, because like I said, it's, I was just in my head. My team was keeping me focused. And they said, when the bell rings, it's just you and him. That's it. And yeah, I've been in this position against so many great champions. I even had my icon. Peter Arts in front of me, so yeah, this wasn't anything uh, anything different. 
So he came out second, but you get introduced second. Yeah. So there you go. And this was a three-round fight, not five. Yeah. He requested three. Why do you think he did that? Um, I don't know. Great insight, Rico. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, why? Why would he <laughs> want? Do you, th do you think he could do, feel he could go five rounds with you? Do you feel mm -hmm. like he wasn't ready for a title shot? Yeah, he will never be able to go five rounds with me. But he just throws it on. Yeah, I've I've fought all the champions and I only did uh, did three rounds always. So why should I fight five rounds now? Because it's the new rules. Just <laughs> it's, we're in a new era right now, okay. and it's Rico's era. So that's why he should fight five rounds. But or else the fight probably wouldn't even happen. So, and the fun thing with that, what I like, the fact of that is, he said he doesn't, he doesn't need three rounds to finish me, but still, he doesn't want to go five rounds. So what's the logic in that? Right. Where's the math, you know? Is by, his, by that logic, he should be able to go 20 rounds. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, because they'll end you in two. Yeah. Was it, a, was it a, like you said, it was almost surreal to fight Peter Arts. Did yeah. you have that sort of nostalgia when you faced off against him right before the bell? No, 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 because Peter Arts was like my, my idol, my icon. And he just, uh, yeah, you know, he, he brought, he was the one giving me the dream to become champion one day. He was just waiting for the crowd to, to settle down a yeah. little bit. You are dialed in. I'm just focused, this is like a hawk, you know, seeing his prey. We got to get you to play a gangster in an American movie. <laughs> that right? would be fun, yeah. A Dutch gangster. I don't know if anyone's ever written a Dutch gangster. No. <laughs> but that'd be pretty good. But I don't really feel like I have that, that gangster look or that, that, face. That, that bad look. If yeah. you walk down the uh, alley looking at me like that, I am running away. Yeah. There's a fight in the crowd. Yeah. Oh, look at that chokehold. Yeah, Whoa. <laughs> some MMA right there. Jeez. And that's just too bad that stuff like this, like, yeah. like this happened. But Are you training MMA, MMA at all, or are you just doing kickboxing? Uh, I tra train MMA when I have time, but yeah. it's yeah, it's been really busy. The, well, I don't, I don't want months. you to get good at MMA, so you stay at kickboxing. OK. <laughs> all right? We all, everyone in this room watching right now probably feels that way. Yeah. Longest stare down ever. Me and my brother growing up used to play the stare down game. Yeah. 30 seconds tops. You guys yeah. been looking at each other for like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the thing is in the ring, it doesn't feel that long. No? It's just, you're just hyped up and you're just like, hey, this, is, this fight needs to happen. All right, here we go. Glory collision, Rico versus Botter. Yes, sir. Build is one of the biggest kickboxing fights ever. So what's your strategy round one? My strategy in round one is just uh, pressure the fight and uh, and make sure uh, I get him to to throw punches. So to get him to to react to what I'm doing. Did you think he was going to go for the knockout early? No. But that in the, but as, as uh, my first reaction is no. But in the end, you don't know what what's going to happen because I think he he doesn't know himself what he's going to do. But he's a, he's a smart guy. He's a good he's a good fighter. He's a good athlete. So it could go all ways. He could go come out swinging. He should start easy. So but you see, I start off with pressuring the fight, coming in, and what logic logically happens is when you walk forward when you try to walk somebody down and faint and he comes in punching you get hit but you see every time he does something i try to um to do something back and he hit me with the jab a few a few times more than a few times but it's just i'm putting the pressure so he needs to work he needs to put in that work you're forcing him to work yeah i'm forcing him to work because if he doesn't work i mean i'm in this range and I can throw my own combinations. And, but in the end, that, that, blows, that blows the engine, that bloat the engine. So I think for me, when I, when I watch this, it's the difference, you saw me trying mm -hmm. to block that kick. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, an automatic reaction. But um, for me, it's like 
pressuring the fight and getting hit sometimes is it isn't the difference isn't that big of like oh he scored like 10 but yeah he opened the nose but like I, like i said earlier the nose was already opened during preparation so you knew you were going to bleed yeah i was i knew so when it happened i was like all right yeah we know we know where we know where it comes from so that that punch wobbled you was that just you off balance no that was off balance i wasn't in trouble and no point of that that fight you saw you saw how he wanted to punch with the right with the right hand and i gave that left kick mm -hmm. which which stopped it that's the impact Boom, rear leg. You love that rear leg. I love it. Because here yeah, he misses. That that just costs energy. Nice front kick. Body punch. You already see him slowing down. Inside low kick. Again he misses. So I don't I don't see this first round being so it was very uh, close. Yeah, it was it was very close. And like the last 30 seconds I was already Yeah. Yeah, he probably landed more strikes, but were they as effective as your strikes? Yeah, that's the thing. The only thing that that maybe helped the scoring was the nose. Yes. But the nose already happened, so I was like, okay. So what's what's your trainer Dennis telling you in the corner right now? It's okay, perfect. You're doing uh, you're doing good. Stay relaxed. Keep pressuring the fight. And he's getting tired. He's getting tired already. And you feel fit, you feel ready. So we just keep putting on the pressure. And just so, like you saw in the beginning, I pressured it, but I didn't throw too many strikes, too many combinations. And that's what we started throwing from the, from, from the second round. Throwing more, more pressure and more combinations. And I didn't get stunned or wobbled in any second of this fight. So you never, even in blocking his punches, never felt something where you're like, wow, this guy's got a lot no, of power. No, this is amazing. This is crazy. There's so much power. No. Jamal Sadiq hit harder than him? Uh, no. Bader hits harder than Sadiq? Yeah, it's more, it's more explosion. Who's the hardest puncher you've been in there with? Uh, Semi Shield. You'd love to fight him again, wouldn't you? That would be great, but... You in your prime, him in his prime? He got you so early, right? Yeah. So, so here, yeah, here we start off again. It's the beginning of the fight, so you got a minute of rest. So he, of course, he had some air. He tried to combine Ooh. with the right hand. Boom, boom, double. Yep, nice left. Straight to the chin. That off. was BS. <laughs> I, that was the leg. That wasn't. That wasn't a low blow. No, definitely not. What, what's he trying to get some time? You think? Of course, he wants to get some air because he feels the pressure. He feels the pressure. The pressure is just getting higher and higher. I think a lot of people expected him to do one of those. There's one of them where he just comes right at you and just throws. Is this like his last hurrah right there? Yeah, I think that? so. Because in a few moments later. He's gonna try and come. Oh, this is already the end. So what happened? I have no clue. You... We'll see that place. Yeah. But right here, give right now. What are you thinking? Thinking. What, what are you doing? You you, you want to fight or? Let's and we watch the, the, the playback. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Because for me, what's still strange is if you check the fight, the first five seconds, he's looking at his other arm. Playback. Let's play back. They'll, they'll, they'll replay. You wanna, can we rewind it? Okay. You see him looking at this arm? Yep. Right, let's play it back one more. Okay. Right, so for for me now it still looks like there's nothing wrong, right? Right. Well, this so is where he, comes not, at, this not, where he throws one of those flurries yeah. I was talking about. Yeah. Ooh, you just missed that uppercut. And here's where it comes. I come in, top top, boom. 
All right, we break. Look at Bada right so now. So he's going to look at his left arm. Yeah, look at him. How long is he looking there? Five, six seconds, and then... That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what I find strange. So now, now he's looking... Ah, I don't know, it's, it's the, oh no, it's so this So what arm. are you insinuating happened here? He felt I was... I was just giving the pressure. The pressure was getting... It was getting hot. It was getting hot in that ring. And he knew he wasn't going to make it to the end of the third round. So in your opinion, he quit? Yeah, that's what I think. That's, how, that's for me, that's how it feels. You know, look at this. I've watched this a hundred times. Why? Why in the world would you look at your other arm for five seconds, then when you walk to the, to the other corner and look at the other arm? And then, oh yeah, ah, ah, this arm that hurts. It's, that's just a, a strange thing for me. But it's possible, it's possible that his arm hurt or whatever happened, I, I, don't, I don't know and I don't care. But for me, he gave up. That's what happened, he gave up. At the, when you're talking to him right now, is that what you believed in or did you think, oh, obviously he's legitimately hurt? Yeah. Of course, because I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the, the things, uh, the the footage yet. Mm -hmm. And you're you're celebrating like you just knocked him out. You didn't care how you won. I didn't care how I won because for me, doesn't matter. For example, like he, uh, because we talked after the, in the after the fight, but also at another glory event, and he said, yeah, uh, you know, in uh, Formula One racing, uh, Max, our Dutch pride, Max, uh, Max Verstappen, he's doing, uh, he's doing really well, and he's the very best. But he also does, uh, he also has sometimes has some technical problems with his, uh, with his car. I said exactly, and that's why he doesn't win. Max is my buddy, he's my friend. But if you have technical problems, that's why you don't win the race, right? And that's in the end. If you put it down, if it gets down on it, it's that that's what needs to happen. You need to win. That's why you're in the ring. So let's just see if there's any damage to the right arm right there. We were trying to figure it out in commentary, like what moment or what shot landed that hurt his arm. We thought hey, hey, for, is he, is yeah. he do this on, on the wrong on the wrong arm, and then because this this is big, it, it, it just looks like that. Look, if you look at his arm, his other arm, arm it is looks, also it like looks, that. Yeah, look, so you're saying they both look swollen just naturally. Yeah. Look how concerned you are right there. You kind of give him a yeah. hug. You're a yeah, good because it's, 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 it's like this is not the way you want right. to end the fight. Let's make it official now in the ring, Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end with an official time. You look emotional. Of course, because a lot of, a lot of things are... We've been working so hard yeah. for this fight, and then again, we yeah, we did it again. That's the that's the, the the best part. How much pressure did you feel to win this fight? Yeah, a lot of pressure. There's always pressure, yeah. but this this fight was like the that last legitimate fight that I needed to win to be uh, considered one of the best, or one of the greatest of all time. Let's okay, listen. Let's listen to your interview here. Celebrating here in Germany, your 50th career victory. You take out the entire Glory heavyweight division, and now a kickboxing legend. What can you describe? What's going through your mind right now? Oh yeah, man, it was a it was a good fight. And then you know all those fans without you, all here doesn't matter. The Rico fight, Rico fans, Bada fans, Nikki fans. The whole fucking roster was amazing. <laughs> and without all you guys, you know, this bitch is so <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's what we want to do. We want to sell out arenas. Yeah. But tell us your game plan coming in against the kickboxing legend. Uh, yeah, the game plan was just let him rush, you know. You know he has a strong punch. And he showed that, you know. I had an injury because of Benny. I was sparring with Benny. He opened up my nose two weeks ago. And um, yeah, the first jab, pop, you know. He was, we knew his jab was, uh, was quick. And oh, no doubt it was. <laughs> Absolutely. He's got some power in those punches. But Rico, 
There is some talk this was not a title fight. If Badahari will do it, will you give him the rematch? Oh, no doubt. I told him right away. I said, hey, this is, this is not our way I wanted to win. And I told him, and I gave him all my respect. And, you know, I said, we're going to do it again, man. Let's do it. Not just for us, but for you guys as well. You two have one of the most intense stare downs I've ever seen in combat sports. Describe, though, Badahari as the man. You guys are both professionals, but this guy's done a lot for the sport. Oh, no doubt, you know. You look at what he did in the K1 days. He's destroyed everybody. And like, like you said, you know, that stare down was intense. There was no game. Some people and that's the thing. They think with the, the stare down, a lot of people think that's like a setup or just to hype the fight. But for us, this is, this is totally real. This yeah? is, this is mm, no game. Did you feel you won the stare down? No, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because I was just like I said, I, I, I was just Rico. Stay yeah. relaxed and if you get fired up during a stare down, it's, yeah, you know, it, it just, especially, for example, if you get that fired up in the ring, it just you just lose your focus. Yeah. And you're going to make mistakes. I will get well soon. I will hit the gym and I will knock this guy out last next year. Is it your forearm and when did that injury happen? What happened? I don't know what happened. I just snapped it at a moment, I think. Let me go to the hospital, take some pictures, see what happens. But hey, this crowd is amazing and uh, let's do this again. Rico, don't walk out of me. Come back. I'm in between these two guys. Final words. I know you did a good job, but I swear today, I swear, you know, I gave you credits, but now I don't give a fuck. Next year, I swear, I will neck you the fuck out. He's gonna knock me out, he's gonna neck me out. Here, here's in Dutch. <laughs> so there you have it. So yeah, do you remember that? Do you remember that conversation? Of course, of course. That's uh, but you see, if you if you look like what what what's been like, it, it's going two ways. Like the whole time, he's like going like this. So first, he's like talking some shit. Blah, 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 blah. But you did very good. Da, 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 da. But it was good. I give you respect. And that's that's how it goes, you know. So between the lines, he just. Yeah, it gives a lot of respect, and yeah, I respect him as well as an athlete. So you want and to fight him again, though? Of course. And what happens if you fight him again? He's not gonna make it to the end, like this fight. It is what it is. It, it's just, you know, this is my era. This is my time. I'm ready for for any fight, but the people want to see this fight, and for me, it can happen as fast as as possible, as fast as he wants. You know. Um, for me, it doesn't matter because I'm ready. I've been ready and I will stay ready because this is my time. This is my era and I'm the reigning champ for a few years already. So, and it's not even being the champ. It's just being the, the perfect athlete. And for me, I've, I'm not like, I've not been on training, off training, on training, off training, fighting, taking six months off or whatever, having some problems. Fighting again, take another year off, fight again. I've been fighting this this game for for years and years in a row, and just keep keeping that rhythm, keeping that rhythm high because I like that rhythm. I like to stay to stay active, and that's where he is literally light years behind. And of course, he's a talented fighter, but for me, if I look at his at this fight. And his last fight versus Hesty, in his mind, he's probably still the same batter that he was whatever many years ago. But his body isn't the same. So his body is not doing what his mind wants, it, wants to do. Well, that's, that's what you see in the, uh, during the fight. During the fights I watch. For example, the, the Hesty fight. Also, st strategically uh, pretty good. Good strategy. But you see 
still getting tired and you can't work you can't work on that anymore so that, that time is over so now it's just it's Rico's time <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for your time Rico for watching Fight Watch with us can't wait to see you fight him again and good luck my man thanks man appreciate it always